Hi everyone, it's Mr. H here, and this video is all about quadratics, in other words, parabolas. We're going to look at completing the square, graphing parabolas, transformations, getting the equation from a graph, and we're going to look at that in standard vertex and factored form. So the quadratics unit is all about polynomials where the largest power is x squared. So the first question says, what are the three forms of a parabola, and what does each form tell you? How do you go between the three forms? Well, one form is the standard form, and that is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the first form, and that has no brackets. It's fully expanded and simplified like shown. Another form is factored form, and the factored form is, as you guessed it, factored. So we have two sets of brackets, y equals ax minus r, x minus s. The final form is the vertex form, and the vertex form is in the form y equals a times x minus h all squared plus k and that h and k is the vertex and that's why it's called the vertex form and so now what does each form tell you well the standard form tells you the c value tells you that it's the y-intercept and so you just look at that last term without the x in it that's the y-intercept for the factored form the r and the s values are the zeros those are the x-intercepts so the zeros are x-intercepts those mean the same thing for the vertex form what that tells you is, as I already mentioned, the H and K is the vertex. And so those are the three key things, but all three forms tell you one other thing. They all have the same A value. A is the vertical stretch or compression factor. And so that is the same in all three forms of a parabola or of a quadratic. And so if the absolute value of A is bigger than one, in other words, if you're one or bigger, then it's a stretch. If it's less than one, if it's a fraction that's smaller than one, then it's a vertical compression. And so that's the key thing to keep in mind when we come later to graphing in a moment. So that's really the main thing. So now how do you go between those forms? Well, to get from factored form to standard form, you just expand. We can foil that out first, outside, inside, last. To go from standard form to factored form, we need to be able to factor. And you can see my last video for that. To go from standard form to vertex form, what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to complete the square. We're gonna do that later in this video. If you're going backwards now from vertex form to standard form, we're going to expand it just like we would from factor form, recognizing that the x minus h squared is the same binomial times itself. So you can use FOIL if you need to there. Now, there's no way to get directly from vertex form to factor form or from factor form to vertex form. So you have to go through the standard form to get from those two side forms to the other. So the second question is this, determine the maximum or minimum of the following quadratic relation by completing the square. So here is where we cover how to do that. So we have y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 14. And so the key to remember is that to get a perfect square, it's in this form. So a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared is equal to a plus or minus b all squared. In the last unit, I factored those. But here, we're going to factor it once we form a perfect square. So in order to do that, we need a common factor of the 2 out of the first two terms. The 2 divided by 2 gives you just 1, and the 12 divided by 2 gives you 6. So x squared minus 6x plus 14, we take that six, the term that's attached to the x, we divide it by two and we square it. Now, sometimes that's called the magic number. And then we add that magic number and we subtract it inside the brackets. From there, we go ahead and we multiply the two times the negative nine. And we want to now bring that outside of the bracket. So two times negative nine is negative 18. And then we still have the plus 14 at the end. And what we have now is a perfect square inside the brackets. What you'll notice if you look at the form a squared plus two a, b plus b squared, we have an x squared minus 2 times x times 3 plus 3 squared. And so in this case, it's the minus part of the perfect square. So that means the term, the sign of the between the two terms in the binomial will be a negative. So it means x minus 3 all squared. And so we get 2 times x minus 3 all squared minus 4. And so from there, we can determine the maximum or the minimum of that. And it's worth noting as well that the nine and the x squared, whenever you do this, it's always gonna give you a perfect square. So you just take the square to both of those two terms and write them in, the, in this line below that. So now what we can do is we can recognize that's in the form of y equals ax minus h all squared plus k. And so the vertex being h and k means that the vertex here is positive three, careful with that, and negative four. So there you go, that's the vertex. But we still haven't been able to determine if it's a maximum or minimum. Because the a value is two, that means it opens up. 
And so that means that it has to be a minimum at that vertex value. It's a minimum of that vertex value or at y equals negative four. So there you go, that's that example. Now example three, transform y equals x squared to y equals negative two x plus three l squared plus four and describe the transformation in words. Now you'll see what I'm doing there is I'm starting by just graphing the graph of y equals x squared, which we should all be able to do by now when we've done quadratics already. We know that we just substitute the x values in of one, two, three, and we get the squares of those, which is one, four, and nine, and the same on the other side, because we have symmetry about the x-axis. And now we look at this second equation, and we recognize that that's in that vertex form. And so we want to start listing some of the transformations that those mean. What a lot of people get mixed up on is they get mixed up on the h value. So what I'm doing here, because it's x plus three, I'm writing it in the form of x minus h. And so now we can clearly see that subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding. And so what that means is the h value is actually negative three. So a is negative two, that's obvious, it's right in the beginning. As I noted already, that h is negative three. And then the k value is positive four. And so let's describe what each of those are doing to the transformations. So the a value being negative two is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of two. Vertical stretch by a factor of two. The negative part of that means that it's going to flip it over the x-axis. It's always flipping vertically, so it's flipping over the x-axis. Another way to say that is reflecting over the x-axis. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all those seven key points that I've drawn on the blue parabola, and I'm going to take each of those. I'm going to vertically stretch each by a factor of two. So I'm going to double all the y values, keeping the x values the same. And then I'm going to flip them down over the x-axis. So instead of two and eight, it's going to become negative two and negative eight. And so you can see there, I've plotted those two points that would be at negative two. And now the two points that are at negative eight. And then the points that are at nine, the y values that were at positive nine, would become negative 18, they're not going to fit on this graph. So we're going to draw the curve through those and I only have five key points that are left. That's just with the A value applied. So it's Y equals negative two X squared. Now, as I noted that H is negative three, that means that there's a shift of three units left. The reason it's to the left is because it's a negative. Negative goes to the left, positive goes to the right. Remember, that's not how it's necessarily shown in the equation, right? As I already went over earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the five key points, we're going to shift them all three units to the left and just plot those points three over. And that is the graph now with the, both the A value and the H value applied. So we've got the negative two, X plus three all squared or X minus negative three, if that's helpful. The last thing is the K value and that shifts it four units up. Positive goes up, negative goes down. That's the key to remember there. So because it's positive, it's going up. So we're taking all those five key points on the black curve and we're moving them four units up. And as soon as we plot those four points, it's going to be at three, four is the vertex or negative three, four is the vertex. And then all the key points have the same shape as the black curve did. And we're then drawing our curve through those points. And that is our final transformed function. So the question said to transform it and describe the transformation in words. We've done both of those things. Oftentimes your teacher won't require you to do all of those transformations, uh, but usually we like to see the A value and the H and K usually can be combined. That's usually fine to do that. So that's how you go ahead and graph that. Question four now says graph Y equals two X plus three times X minus one by finding the zeros in the vertex. So it's in factor form. In order to find the zeros, we need to let Y be equal to zero. So we get zero equals to the equation that we had up top, two times X plus three times X minus one. And if we divide both sides by two, that just cancels right out. Two divided by two is one. So we get zero is equal to X plus three times X minus one. So each of those factors, one of them has to be zero or the other one has to be zero in order to, for them to multiply to give you zero. So we solve for what each of those would be. Either X is equal to negative three or X is equal to positive one. And those are our x-intercepts, or those are our zeros. So we can go to our graph, and we can plot those two points on the graph. That's where the parabola is going to pass through the x-axis. Now we go for the vertex. And in order to find the vertex, there's a number of ways to do that. But the easiest way to do if it's in uh, factor form is to use the zeros or use the r and s value, add them together, divide by 2. So that's what we've done here. We've used the two zeros, added them together, divide by 2, and we get negative 1. 
Now we sub that negative one back into the equation. And so when we do that, we're able to find the y value of the vertex. And we get y is equal to here, two times positive two times negative two. Be careful when you're adding and or subtracting your integers. So we get y equals negative eight. So what that means is there's a vertex at negative one and negative eight. And just to check that, your, your vertex, your x value of the vertex better be exactly between your x-intercepts because of the symmetry of a parabola. And in fact, it is here. So there's x equals negative one. There's the point where y is negative eight. And we can draw our curve of best fit through those points. And that is the graph of y equals two times x plus three times x minus one. So now the next question says, determine the equation of a graph on the right in vertex form, factored form, and standard form. We're gonna do it in all three forms. And so there is the vertex form, general form of it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify the vertex and one other point. You need to have the vertex and one other point. It doesn't matter what other point. I'm using the y-intercept because it's a really easy point to use, but you don't have to use it. But you do need the vertex and you need one other point, any other point, in order to use this form. And so the vertex is at 118. The point is that I'm using is 0, 016. That's the y-intercept as I noted. And so I'm letting the point be the x and y values. And then the vertex values are h and k. So I'm going to substitute all these values into that general form of a vertex form. And when I do that, I'm going to get 16 because that's the y value. So 16 is equal to a. That's what I'm trying to solve. I don't know a. That's the whole trick here. I want to figure out what a is. x is 0, so I'm going to sub in 0. h is 1, so 0 minus 1 all squared, and k is 18. So now what I want to do is I want to rearrange the equation for a. So I'm going to go to 0 minus 1, and I'm going to simplify that. 0 minus 1 squared is negative 1 squared. And so now I'm going to use the reverse order of operations to rearrange. So I'm going to subtract first. So Sam Deb I'm using here, rather than Vedmus, the reverse order of operations. And so now I've got negative 2 equals a times negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1. And so now I can divide by 1 because it works out there's nothing to divide by. So it's really nice this way. So a is negative 2. And so we get a final answer sub substituting the a value in and substituting the h and k values in, leaving the x and y as general variables in the equation. So we have y equals negative 2, x minus 1 all squared plus 18. So now that we've done the vertex form, let's move on to factored form. Remember the factored form is y equals a times x minus r times x minus s. And so what we have to start by doing is identifying where the x-intercepts are. You can see here that they're at negative 2 and positive 4. So that means that r is negative 2 and s is 4. When we substitute those in, it's going to mean we subtract negative 2 and subtract 4 in the equation. Now we also need another point. I could use the vertex. I could use any other point where it's clearly going through. I think the easiest one to use is 0, 16, the y-intercept, and so I'm going to use that here as well. So I'm going to substitute these r, s, and x, y values into the equation. Again, I need to try to solve for a. Now, we know what a is, so we could already write this equation, but let's assume we didn't know what the vertex form was. We didn't solve for a earlier, and so if we didn't, we'd have to solve for a using this method. So we'd have to substitute y equals 16, x equals 0, r equals negative 2, and s equals 4, and then solve that for a. And it better be the same thing as we had in vertex form, because it is the same graph, right? And so let's see if it is. So we get a times 2 times negative 4, so that's negative 8a, and that's equal to 16. We divide by the coefficient in front of a, and we get a equals negative 2. The negative 8 divided by negative 8 gives us 1 times a. And so 16 divided by negative 8 is negative 2. So what that means is we can write that as y equals negative 2 times x plus 2, because it was subtracting a negative, and then x minus 4, just as we substitute those values in earlier. So now, if you're writing in standard form, that's something you can't solve directly. You have to first find it in vertex form or factored form, and then put it into standard form. So what I'm going to do for part C here for standard form is I'm going to FOIL this out. x times x is x squared. Uh, x times negative 4 is negative 4x, 2 times x is positive 2x, and the 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And I'm going to get rid of the brackets by expanding and simplifying. I'm going to combine those middle terms, the negative 4x and the positive 2x. It gives me negative 2x. And then I'm going to use the distributive property to get the negative 2 times all the terms in the brackets. So we get negative 2x squared 
plus 4x plus 16. So we've been able to come up with this in all three forms and note that the a value is negative 2 in all those forms. It's the same in all the forms. If this video has been helpful, please like and subscribe. Comment below what you find most difficult about quadratics and why. For more on factoring, click the video on the right. On the left, see the grade 10 math playlist. I'm going to continue adding to it until all the review videos from the course are complete. Thanks so much for watching.